this video, I'm going to talk about how to run a K group ANOVA with a covariate and a couple of additional assumptions that are necessary when you include a covariate. All right, so for a full list of assumptions, I recommend watching the video that I created on how to do this in SPSS. I have uh, some more detail about that there. In R, um, first of all, we're using uh, this video, same data as the last video on Manova, where we are using data from PISA 2012 to look at differences um, and based on uh, students feeling like they had um, opportunities in class, express their opinions at different levels, and then um, how their scores were different perhaps on algebra and geometry subscores. And then for the covariate, we are going to put in SES as a covariate measure to see if um, once SES has been accounted for in the model, does that change these relationships much? So. Um, Here's what the subset of the data is that I'm looking at. So I'm just looking at these two variables plus this one and this one here. Um, and the first thing that we need to do is make opinion a factor variable, because currently opinion is a numeric variable. Um, I have already changed it, so it's not here. Um, but it, it will um, make things easier if it's already um, listed as a grouping variable. So one of the things that we have to do that's different with Mankova and Manova with a covariate added to it is we have to check this assumption called homogeneity of regression slopes. In other words, does um, the covariate have the same regression slope for each of the two outcome measures across all four groups, of, in this case, of the opinion variable? And an easy way to do that is actually just to create an interaction term because the interaction term of opinion times SES and then would be equal to the two outcome measures in MANOVA. And so um, if we get a statistically significant interaction term, then what that means is that um, across the four levels, we see different effects, which effect is just another word for slope in regression. So... Um, and of course, MANOVA is built um, on top of regression. So uh, we can create this term. I've just called it HRSMV for um, homogeneity of regression slopes multivariate. Um, so at the multivariate level, we can run this. And, and as you can see here, so I've done like I would normally. Um, I've used CBind to put the two outcome together. And then instead of putting a plus symbol here like we would if there was a covariate, because we talk about covariates being added to the model, we're going to create an interaction term with a multiplication symbol of opinion times SES to see if SES slope differs across these levels of the grouping variable. And um, when you look at the summary of that, and I'm using Wilkes uh, lambda here as the S statistic, if we scroll down, you'll see, um, and this is how R indicates an interaction term. It uses a colon, opinion times SES. Um, if we go down to the um, the probability greater than F, which is the P value, we see it's not statistically significant. So it's not significant at the multivariate level. And then just like we would do a follow up ANOVA um, for a, a follow up ANOVAs for the MANOVA. We can do the same thing here to look at the univariate level and um, just use this same line of code summary AOV of that same variable. And we can scroll down and the p-value is also not statistically significant for algebra. And if we scroll down to response two, which is geometry, we can see that um, it is also not statistically significant for geometry. So in other words, um, we do have homogeneity of regression slopes. And then there's one other thing that we need to check here, and that is the linearity of the covariate with each of the outcome measures. So um, 
One thing we could do first is just look at the correlation among all three SES with the two outcome measures. And if you look at that, um, you will see that PV1MACC and PV1MACS do have a fairly high one. We talked about this in the last video that this could be problematic. Um, there's also a weak correlation between SES and um, algebra and between SES and geometry. Um, and we could look at this a little bit further. So um, is a linear model appropriate? So there's a relationship. Is it appropriate? Well, um, we could just create a linear model that maps the SES variable onto each of the two outcome measures to see what the residuals look like. And um, if we plot that, we can see the residuals versus fitted. We should see basically um, no correlation there or no relationship. It looks like there's no relationship. That red line is pretty solid. Um, if we look at the next plot, which is the QQ plot, there seems to be some trailing off on the um, the underside here of the top right, but um, otherwise looks pretty good. Um, and then we could look at these other ones as well to see if there's any issue with um, the various, um, yeah, with this one um, or with the leverage. So trying to find an understand outlier. We can also just look at a histogram of the residuals and see if it's normally distributed like it should be. Um, this looks a little bit skewed to the left. However, if we look at descriptives for this, um, we see that uh, the skew and kurtosis values look okay. It's not highly skewed. Um, the KS test, which is influenced by the sample size, unfortunately, um, is telling us that it's statistically significant, which means that this is telling us it's not um, normally distributed. The image doesn't look hugely dis um, skewed, and the skewness value of these is actually low. It's within bounds of the positive to negative 2. So I would be more um, on the side of saying, well, uh, it's pretty robust against issues of normality in a MANOVA test, and this doesn't seem to deviate a lot. Um, and we can't trust this result, so we're going to go with um, a visual inspection and skewness values. We could also ask um, to continue looking at whether linear is appropriate, whether there's a relationship between the fitted values from the model, so those that were actually predicted from the model, um, with, with the um, residuals. And we sort of already looked at this plot. We can easily create it ourselves, but you have to run the MANOVA first. And I've already done that here, but I wanted to show it in this order of how you would um, think about it. So I've already run the model. The model is called M3. And you'll want to pick, uh, so type in dollar sign model. Uh, if you've called yours M3, whatever you've called it, dollar model, and then dollar, and pick the one that has both of the outcome measures on it. So we're going to plot that, then a comma, and it puts these little um, tilde looking symbols around it. We're going to plot that against the residuals from that model. So basically the residuals versus the outcome. And when you do that, um, you get this plot. And we should see that it essentially is along a straight line, uh, basically at a 45 degree angle or a slope of one. Um, and um, it's hard to tell from this image, so we can also run the same, uh, run a correlation on the same thing. Um, make sure to put um, a comma between. And if we look at the correlations here, we see the correlations of um, algebra with the residuals for algebra is um, close to one, and the residuals for geometry um, with the outcome measure for geometry, which is number two are essentially one. And then the off ones, the off diagonals are also close to one. I would say this is a pretty good indication that a linear model is appropriate. Um, so then, um, of course, you would need to check some of the other assumptions that I haven't gone through um, for normality and such. But running the MANOVA, notice that we do the same thing as before, except now we're putting plus SES. That uh, is to denote that SES is the covariate. 
And if we run that model and get the summary of it, I'm using Wilkes Lambda again as the test statistic. Um, we see that it is um, statistically significant for both the opinion variable, so across the groups, and um, we see that um, a very small p-value for SES. And um, the other thing that we can do, though, to help us understand what, how meaningful that is, is to look at the partial eta squared. Um, and that partial eta squared shows us that opinion accounts for 0.15% of the, um, the variation in geometry and algebra scores. In other words, 0.15% of the variability in the algebra and geometry scores can be attributed to group membership. Whereas um, SES is explaining a whole lot more of that variation in geometry and scores. So after having accounted for differences in SES, um, the types of experiences students had and be able to express their opinion um, doesn't explain very much at all. In fact, um, if you go to the previous video without SES in this model, um, opinion explains about 0.3%. So it actually dropped it in half by including SES. It wasn't big to begin with, though. And then, of course, we can run some follow-up tests using ANOVA. So first, running this uh, summary.aov to get ANOVA. Um, we see response one is the algebra. So we see um, same thing. There are statistically significant differences across groups after having accounted for the statistically significant covariate of SES. For geometry, um, we also see this as the case. Um, statistically significant across geometry, as well as um, a statistically significant covariate. And so that tells us there's differences for both geometry and algebra. So then the question becomes, well, what does that look like? Um, we can't run a t-test with a covariate. There's no such thing. And we've just run an ANOVA with a covariate. So how do we see the differences um, in, a, in a pairwise manner? Well, you could just ignore the SES and run those tests um, to look at pairwise comparison. However, we can also um, look at some graphics to help us with this. So um, there is a function called em means test that is in the R statics package, and um, and we can we can run this to see what's going on. So put in um, PISA, PV1 MACC by opinion. So we have to do this separately for each group. Um, and then tell it covariate is SES, and then we can tell it to use the adjustment method of Bonferroni for this group. And um, after you do that, you will get um, a, a tibble from the dplyr package um, that, that shows you the statistic and the p-values that are associated with it. It's got cut off at the moment. I'd have to make my window a little bit bigger. So you'll be able to see those uh, p-values to see what those differences look like. So here you're comparing um, group one versus group two, one versus group three, and, and so on and so forth. But something that's really helpful to also look at, um, and by the way, uh, you can't see it at the moment, but this returned results that showed um, differences between groups one and three, between one and four, and um, between two and three for um, algebra. Um, I'm sorry, one, one, three, one, and four, two, and three, and two, and four for algebra. Um, so uh, basically, um, one is different than the lower two groups, and two is different than the lower two groups after having a count for SES. Um, then we can um, use this attribute function of this. Uh, so I stored it in PW1. Um, and, and tell it to store the attribute em means. And um, when you do that, you'll see that the uh, em means actually has a few different things in it that are useful for us. Um, so I'm looking at the structure of that emm1 variable I saved it into. So we have, we have of course, SES and opinion, um, but we also have the estimated means, which are the estimated means of the outcome measure at um, um, according to holding SES constant. 
And so um, what that allows us to do then is, first of all, we can take this opinion variable. Um, it is a factor because I've already changed it later. Um, but we want to make sure that that um, actually becomes a numeric um, version so that we can plot it. So you need to change that specific variable opinion back to numeric. And then we can create a plot. So I've got a plot here that is a scatter plot, and I'm using both geome point and geome line in order to um, put points on there for each of the four groups and then connect them with lines so that they're easier to see. And then you could even add some detail to the plot in order to indicate um, which differences are statistically significant. If you wanted to, I've added some labels here and and basically here is what it's it shows us. Um, it, it shows us these differences. So remember, one and three are pretty far apart. And remember, it's it's zoomed in on this, so you're not seeing a huge range here. Um, but one and three are statistically significant. One and four are statistically significant, of course. Um, and then two and three and two and four are statistically significant. Um, when accounting for that SES variable. And then we could do the same thing for geometry. So when we look at the geometry scores, we just switch out the, the formula here with the geometry variable. And um, I'm saving this into PW2. And then um, doing the same thing. So I got to store the um, estimated means information in EM2. M2 change that opinion variable to numeric, and then plot it again. And we get this really nice looking plot um, that is um, worthy of sharing in um, some type of manuscript. And so that's, uh, that's how to do this with a covariate in R.